I'm Gabe, and, and welcome, welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript brings you inside Social Justice Week at NHS and heads over to Holyoke to visit a social justice high school. On Hamped Up, Connor McLendon covers one of the most intense competitions of the year, the Quiz Bowl. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nell Sanders, and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. As some of you may know, this week is Social Justice Week at Northampton High. Events throughout the week explore different areas of activism at our school and concludes Friday with an intersecting panel during fourth period. Each day is designated to one of four activist clubs at NHS. Monday was Environmental Clubs Represented Day, Tuesday was SOCAs, Wednesday was GSAs, and Thursdays was Feminist Collectives. All the clubs showed videos at the start of different periods throughout the week to educate and bring awareness to some of their beliefs and goals. The panel on Friday features special speakers from our community, such as Rosemary Speck, Mary Renda, Trevor Baptiste, and Billy Myers. The panel also focuses on the theme of intersectionality and how independent and oppressed social identities overlap. I got to sit down and talk to members and advisors of each of the four clubs to hear about their vision and goals. I'm Sylvia Shred. I am a member of all the four social justice clubs. I also help organize Social Justice Week. Friday we have a panel of professors and activists um, from around the area. The point of Social Justice Week, there's sort of three main points. There's the, uh, the idea around education. To make sure that students feel comfortable in the classroom, we need to talk about these issues because ignoring it does not make the problem go away. The second is that it teaches students how to learn about their rights and think critically around the society that we live in. And the third is that it pushes people outside their comfort zone. It pushes them to start learning how to empathize and how to listen to other people um, and really take a stand for what they believe in. We are going to participate in a standout on the Calvin Coolidge Bridge. Everyone has a right to have clean air, clean water, access to a clean like living area. Uh, so we invited a Native American activist um, named Billy to speak at our panel on Friday. Um, and he's done a lot of work with the Keystone Pipeline, which is definitely a relevant issue for environmental justice. For this week, we focused on pronouns. Also, we put up a display. It's um, a timeline that sort of reflects on history. So our panelist is really awesome. Her name's Rosemary. She worked in New York with Black Lives Matter and her father was a really avid um, environmentalist. Um, so for Social Justice Week, um, we, along with all of the other clubs, uh, chose a video that we wanted to show in classrooms um, in the hope that it might spark some thinking or some discussion amongst the students. We also decided to organize a menstrual supply and diaper drive for Safe Passage, which is an organization that supports um, women and children who are leaving abusive households. For the club, I want to um, raise awareness among the community um, about some of the societal inequities that um, in influence um, women, especially raising awareness about um, issues that women's, uh, women face internationally. Um, child marriage is still a very serious concern. Female genital mutilation is commonplace in some countries. We, living in a fairly liberal part of the country, some of the liberal attitudes that we benefit from here um, cloud our, our perspective sometimes about what it's like for people in other parts of the country and the world. I hope you all enjoyed the events this week and took away something new and important. Activism and social justice, especially in this day and age, are crucial components of society to continue to fight for and further. We should all give respect and a big thanks to the speakers and clubs who participated. Again, I'm Nell Sanders and this was Tell It Like It Is. Hi, I'm Connor McClendon. This week for Social Justice Week, I went to the Social Justice Charter School in Holyoke to talk to students and faculty about the school's mission and what makes it unique. What are some of the things you do surrounding social justice? Our teachers are developing curriculum. There's actually a teaching tolerance rubric that teachers go through to kind of base whether their curriculum and their materials have or offer a counter lens to what they're teaching. We have, you know, humanities courses in the 11th and 12th grade that are really very strictly, you know, 
social justice based. I believe that um, students do have a voice so that they can come and say, you know, <laughs> this is what we believe and this is what we want to do. Um, I don't know if you saw the students <clears throat> who felt very strongly, they had a strong reaction to the election results. Um, the students took it upon themselves that during lunch period that they wanted to go outside to the field and, you know, write signs and have a protest. And I will be there as will the dean and so on to keep everyone safe and in line. But there you go. What do you think is one of the things, the biggest things that makes the school unique from a traditional public school? Um, the school... It's all about social justice, and it wants us to not just think like what every other school teaches, but they want us to like think outside like the wall and want us to think about um, the events that are occurring and all the social justice like issues that the society doesn't really teach us about. The school is like different for a lot of things. Like instead of like, um, yeah, instead of like teachers telling you what to do and stuff, you can actually build a relationship with the teacher. Like you could talk. A, talk to them like you don't always have to talk to them about miss like like important stuff like school related you could talk to them like outside of school these the school is really great right now like at 11 15 i'm gonna be on my way to base to have an internship at nursing and it gives you a lot of like you know it lets you see what all the careers you want to take on as a social justice school allyship um, integrity uh, identity you know these are some of the things leadership these are the the words that we strive our students you know we all strive to um, embody with you said you don't use uh, last names here and yeah. why is that well my understanding is that um, really in a, a model of a school that you know everyone has access to education it's a way that um, students feel like as Paulo Freire um, believed in that there was sort of like an equal footing of teacher learner and that, you know, sometimes I'm the learner, sometimes the teacher and having that first name basis kind of builds this predisposed rep, you know, rapport between us. Family really is um, what comes to mind. Um, you know, we really strive to be like a comprehensive school and, um, it, it tr truly, for me, the real way to address education because it is looking at the whole student. And, and we don't just say that. I believe we live that. Hi, I'm Meredith. For Social Justice Week, SOCA has been trying to facilitate conversations between people of color and white people. This week, I sat down with Ms. Oshiak, Zion Barber, and Calvin Hill to talk about the importance of this topic of discussion. Whenever people get into race discussions, you know, a lot of people tend to just see it as if I call you out on doing something or I tell you you're doing something, you know, that you know, I feel uncomfortable with or that another person of com color feels uncomfortable with, you immediately take that as, oh, you must be calling me racist and then you know you want to defend yourself you know it's something that you want to defend yourself against because you don't want to be called a racist because being racist is looked down upon in this society if people are completely separated not as a uh, institutional segregation but as to you know on their like purposely as like as a self separation then there's no way of creating a better society. I see the sort of psychological and emotional impact on those kids of color um, feeling really isolated, feeling like they don't fit in, and I see a lot of white kids not sure about how to approach kids of color, and race is a really hard thing, I think, to talk about, but it's a very real thing that impacts school. Being an overt racist is really looked down upon. And so you want to defend yourself and say that you're not that. When in reality, the real discussion that we're having is that you're uninformed about a certain thing that makes me uncomfortable or makes another person of color uncomfortable, and you're uninformed and we are trying to inform you. We're not calling you a racist. We're not saying that you're a bigot for it. But when you hear our concerns and you immediately just denounce them, that's when, you know, we realize that you're not trying to have a dialogue, you're trying to have an argument. It's important to learn, especially 
with our president-elect how to have respectful conversations when we are talking about things that are emotional, things that are personal, um, things that make us different, and trying to navigate that. I don't think it would be right for white people to lead this, like, you know, this movement to create conversation, to start conversation. I think it's our, I think it's white people's duty simply to move aside and allow people of color to speak their minds, say what they'd like to talk about, what like issues they want to bring up, how they want to talk to people, like how they want to be seen concerning their race. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? His right, Samuel Coleridge. Holyoke. Oh. J. T J. is the correct answer. John Rockefeller. Northampton. D. D, D is correct. Michael Fox. Northampton. J. J. Ah, that is correct. However, that bell marks the end of our last lightning round. It also marks the end of our match. Hi, I'm Connor McClendon. I'm here with Josh Dobrow, Matt Grimaldi, and Henry Reed, and we are going to do something a little bit different this week. I am going to compete against them in a fake quiz bowl match, and we're just going to see what happens. I don't think it's going to go well for me. Toss up the sixth. One cartoon of this gathering shows a priest administering last rites to an officer on Deplain Street. One suspect in this event was arrested twice before fleeing the country. That man was Rudolf Schnablet. May Day celebrations by organized labor honor this event, which followed August Spy's speech praising the slaves of McCormick killed earlier. Governor Altgeld granted clemency to three convicted instigators of this event. Only one man was killed in the incident that started this event, though numerous others were wounded by revolver fire. This event occurred during a labor strike for an eight-hour... Henry Reed. The Haymarket Affair? Yes, sir. Uh. This play's last act depicts the dead as matter-of-fact, without sentimentality, and above all, without... Oh, no. Uh, lugubriousness. I'm going to do a wild shot here. This will probably be wrong. Is this our town? I hate you and yes. Ah. <laughs> that was fun. Toss up the 18th. This element is used as a shield against atmospheric contamination in gas tungsten arc welding. Radioactive decay in the lithosphere from minerals containing thorium and uranium create most of this element on Earth. It was first observed as a yellow line in the solar spectrum. When it is cooled to below 4 Kelvin, the most common isotope of this element can creep up the walls of a container as a superfluid. Alpha particles are the nuclei of this element and the second most abundant in the universe. For 10 points, name this lightest noble gas with an atomic number, Josh Dobrow. Helium? Yeah. In other sports news, the girls' basketball team is currently 8-1 and one on the season and has not lost to a single Western Mass opponent. The boys' basketball team defeated Putnam 61-49 on Monday, their first win over the Beavers in seven years. The boys' track team is 5-0 and oh, and the girls' track team is 4-1. and one. Both the boys' and girls' swimming teams are 3-2. and two. And finally, the East Hampton ice hockey team is 2-7. and seven. Make sure to go to nhstechnology.org to see more. And if you have a story you want the transcript to cover, email news at northampton-k12.us.